Here we go again. It's been a while. Hello, my lovelies. My name's Gilbert Dorfalian, and the plan for today is to talk about what happened in 2020 and looking forward to 2021. It is already 2021. 2020 definitely happened. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. 2020 happened and I disappeared for a couple of months there. It was not my intention, obviously, but sometimes things happen, the world happens, and sometimes people are depressed. That culminated in about November and I've been slowly working towards becoming, well, more of a human being, basically, since then. I would not say that I'm better for a start, it's a constant fight. Those of you who have depression or know people with depression will understand that. But I am starting to feel creative again, which is obviously something that I need. I am not promising to come back every week or every other week on the schedule that I was. I will talk about this a little bit more later, but I am back and I am gonna be working on stuff again. So you are gonna be seeing more of me again. Thank you to all of you who expressed your worry, who asked where I was. I certainly didn't mean to ignore any of you, and it was really appreciated knowing that there were people still out there who wondered where I was really helped. So thank you, and I apologise for just disappearing. Sadly, these things happen when you have a year like 2020 and the trash fire that that was. But here we go again. So <laughs> yeah, 2020 really happened. So let's look back, flash back to the beginning of 2020 when I was all optimistic and was like, yeah, I'm gonna finish the ZeroFL for the summer. Yeah, that, that didn't happen, did it? I was almost finished in May, honestly. And then I put a ZeroFL down for about four months. A ZeroFL literally needed one hem doing and, or a couple of hems doing, one hem doing, and it has taken me four months to do that hem. I am working on it. Obviously there's still the doublet to do, and I want to do a vest as well, but the trunk hose are almost done. However, my plan for 2020 was to have him completely done, and clearly that didn't happen. There was a convention that was meant to happen in the summer that I was thinking of wearing him to. That didn't happen. And I need deadlines to finish things, so even without the depression, that probably wouldn't have happened. So. Yes, Aziraphale is not done. My other plans were to get married, technically this year on the 2nd. <laughs> we cancelled that in October, and boy, let me tell you, we cancelled that at the right time. Obviously means I didn't do any sewing for it, but it sure did get cancelled. Yeah, 2020 it sure did happen and ruined all of my plans, but I'm still here. Congratulations, guys. We, we made it through to 2021. I realise we've got off to a bumpy start, but, you know touch wood. At least we can move forward with things, whatever else happens. So my other plan for sewing from last year was, oh, if I get a Xerophel done and I do all the wedding sewing, I can do Akodama from Parasol Protectorate. That didn't happen, but I have started on the research. So, you know, I've got one thing that got half done, <laughs> one thing that got cancelled so I didn't have to do anything for, and uh, one thing that was reliant on the other two things being done, so clearly isn't done. Doing great so far, huh? But let's talk about some positives, because that was a whole lot of negatives. So the one thing I've learned from 2020, which I reckon everyone has learned from 2020, is compassionate deadlines. I know that's Noelle's tagline, but I am borrowing it, because, oh boy, howdy have I needed that this year. I have learned to be, especially in those last couple of months as I've been slowly dragging myself back up, the small goals are the things that I now start to count. I am trying to stop focusing on the big goals and working more on the smaller ones. Because honestly, in this kind of situation, that's what you need to do. You need to focus on every every step towards that goal, honestly, can be broken down into little goals. And that's the kind of stage that I've reached. And I'm pretty, honestly, pretty pleased with that. I have also learnt to sew masks very well which leads into things I have accomplished this year. I have sewn an awful lot of masks. 
Honestly, I'm pretty proud with this. My wife keeps saying that that's how I've been keeping my keep this year, is that I've been sewing masks, keeping us in masks. The other thing I've accomplished is my hand sewing. I was never disappointed in my hand sewing. I knew I could hand sew, but I'd never started a project like Aziraphale. I'd done bits and pieces of hand sewing. I'd actually really managed to avoid doing hand sewing on a lot of my costumes. And looking back, I can see a lot of places where I wish I had done hand sewing because it would have given me a nicer finish. So if nothing else, Aziraphale has taught me that not to be afraid of hand sewing, even though that's how I started sewing. My very first costumes were all hand sewn. I've kind of, I reached the stage where I stopped and started to look on hand sewing. I started to look down on hand sewing and now I've started to see it more of a couture thing as obviously a historical thing but as a couture thing so something that I can utilize even when I'm doing sewing machine stuff. And the other thing that I accomplished this year that I'm super proud of was Coco Bid and honestly everything that we've done involving the costume community you guys don't see a lot of the behind the work that goes on but it's massively grown this year and I'm really proud of everyone who's involved in this community, everyone who's joined. It's really nice to see everything growing and everyone's channels growing and knowing that in some small way I've had a piece of uh, like being able to help with that that's really it feels really good and CocoVid was such a highlight there's a reason I managed to drag myself out to do those videos and they were the last two videos that I did because it was so important to me that it went well and it it was so good to see everyone interacting and just the response that we had from everyone was amazing and that's something that honestly even with everything that went on in 2020 that was absolutely a highlight for me it's something that i'm proud of and something that i will look back as a positive from 2020 if people talk to me in the future about 2020 i won't be able to say that it was all bad because coco fit happened and that's something that's really nice to say. It's it's nice to know that there's something positive to look back on from last year. That was 2020. Let's look forward to 2021. I, like I said, I've learned compassionate goals. So there are things that I want to learn and try and do next year, but I'm not holding myself to them. They are things that I want to do and I hope happen. And I hope I can look back in 2022 and go, yep, I did those, ticked off the, the list. But if they don't happen, I'm not gonna beat myself up over it. I'm done with beating myself up over not getting stuff done. So the first thing that I wanna to learn to do is I'm going to try and make my first corset. It's pretty, I, I honestly, I'm pretty excited about it. It's something that I've wanted to do for a while. It's something that I was doing research on in the background as I was sitting there not doing Aziraphale. It's something that I need for Akodama. It's something that I'm looking forward to doing. I, there's a lot of women's corsets tutorials out there, but there's significantly less for men's. It's a different body shape. Although I've watched all the women's ones, I'm aware that my body shape is different. Well, my body shape is generally round, but you know, soft. We're going for soft. It's going to be interesting to see what the differences are between men's and women's. I'm not worried about the sewing. I'm worried about the fitting. That's the bit that I'm really going to struggle with. Fitting has always been my nemesis. So it's going to be really interesting to see if I can get it done. There are a couple of new techniques in there, but generally it's not going to be as many new techniques as I did this year. So something that I'd like to accomplish this year aside from my first corset is to finally finish Aziraphale. That is on my list of things to do. Seriously, I only have well, I say I only have the doublet left to do, but I have the ruffs to do as well. So actually there is more than that, but I've almost finished the trunk hose. The doublet probably will be a little bit less sewing because I won't have all of the pains to do. Although I want to see the pains for the most relaxing bit because it was just repetitive, but you know, it will be a lot more difficult to fit. And as I've just said, fitting is my nemesis, but I'm going to do it this year. It's going to be done this time next year. I'm going to be sitting here probably not wearing it, but showing you pictures of it being finished and you will have seen the process. That is something that I really do want to have done. There's one other thing that I have planned for next year, this year. I don't know why I'm saying next year. We all know it's this year already. Let's not pretend that I got this done on time. The other thing that we're doing this year is we are moving. We are moving in about a month, a little bit over a month. And for the first time in my life, I am going to have a dedicated craft room dedicated sewing space. So I'm really looking forward to documenting for you guys 
A, setting that up, because who doesn't love setting up sewing? I know not everyone, probably not everyone does, but I personally love watching setting up my sewing studio videos, so I'm really excited to do one of those for myself. I'm really excited to have a dedicated space where I don't have to reset every time, that's going to be really great. And I'm really excited to get to set it up how I want it and get everything where I want it. But I also want to show you guys the process of moving everything and how I'm going to pack everything up to move and also kind of like the difference between what I've got set up now. So the kind of space where you're in a small space and you don't have a dedicated space. What I've managed to do, I've shown you bits of it, but I want to show you the complete how it's set up at the moment and then show you how I'm going to change that into a full time space. So that's something that's definitely going to happen this year because uh, We've already handed in our notice for this flat and we are definitely moving. We got the plans for the new flat today. I say new flat, it's actually a house. We got the plans for the new house today, so we are definitely moving. That is a thing that's happening, lockdown or no lockdown. Like I've already touched on, the other thing that I would like to do something towards this year that isn't just research is Akodama. The corset is the first stage of that because he's a fop. He needs proper undergarments the same way a woman does. He shapes his body. So that's going to be fun. I am struggling to look into men's corsets. So it's going to be a good time. You're going to watch me suffer. So my plan going forward with videos is I am not putting myself on a deadline anymore. Once we move and we're in the new flat, I'm going to put myself back on a deadline. It's probably not going to be once a week. It's certainly not going to be once a week. It might be once every two weeks. It might be once a month. I'm going to see what happens when we move. Once we move and I'm in a dedicated space and I'm not battling with my poor wife who's been very patient with me all year as she works from home office in our two room flat. Once I've got that dedicated space then I will not have to use the spoons to set myself up every time so it'll be a lot easier to put out videos. So that is my plan going forward. I'm not putting out a deadline. I will probably start picking up a routine again sometime in March, but I'm not promising anything until then. Before then, I do want to put out the trunk hose because the trunk hose will be done by then. They're going to be done very soon. And I will start putting out content about the new studio as well. So there are going to be videos before then. I'm just not promising a routine until sometime in March. Like I said, fingers crossed. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So those are what the heck happened in 2020 and what I want to do in 2021, the year that we're in already. My question for you guys today is what are your plans for 2021 and what did you accomplish in 2020? Is there something like me that you can look back on and go, you know what, 2020 was an awful year, but this thing happened, so I wouldn't want to erase the whole slate clean. Thanks for watching. Thank you again for all of the support you've given me in the last couple of months. I really appreciate it. And honestly, thank you for the support for all of last year. I have seen this channel grow from basically nothing to over 5,000 viewers in the last year. And I really appreciate it that, especially those of you who stuck around, especially all of you, the Costume community is a wonderful thing. Viewers and creators, you're all creators as well. And it's a lovely thing to be a part of. It's something that brings a smile to my face every time I think about it, even in the darkest moments, so thank you. If you enjoyed this and you're looking forward to what I'm doing in 2021, then please think about giving me a like and subscribing if you're not already for more sewing and costume related content. Stay safe, stay sensible, and I shall see you, if not shortly, at least at some point in the near future. Bye!